What are inverse trig functions? Well, we know that the sine of an angle equals x over the radius if we have a triangle. The side r x y angle theta. So the inverse sine is x over r equals theta. So it is what is the value of theta that I have x over r. Similarly, cosine of theta is cosine of theta is y over r. So inverse cosine of y over r is the angle theta. And tangent of theta equals x over r. So the inverse tangent of x over r equals theta. Now we do have to restrict our domains and ranges because our unit circle, when we look around, we have multiple angles that can give us a value. So for the inverse sine, we restrict our domain to negative 1 to 1 and our range negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So if we're looking at our unit circle, that is going to be the right side. For cosine, inverse cosine, we restrict our domain to negative 1 to 1 and our range is 0 to pi, which is the top half of the unit circle. And inverse tangent, the domain is all row numbers and the range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So let's try to evaluate some. So the inverse tangent of negative 1. Well, we're looking for the spot on the unit circle. And remember, we have to be in the right half where tangent is negative 1. So that means that sine and cosine are the same but have opposite signs. So where does that happen? Well, that happens at 7 pi over 4. To evaluate inverse sine of 1 half, again, we're looking at the right side of the unit circle. And where does sine equal 1 half? At pi over 6. Then inverse cosine, we're looking at the top half of the circle, of the unit circle. We want to see where it's 1 over square root of 2. That's at pi over 4. Now sometimes we have numbers that are not so friendly. So inverse sine of 0.64, we want to use a calculator for that. So the inverse sine of 0.64, we want to make sure our mode is in degrees. And that will give us 39.79 and then inverse cosine of 1.5 well let's see what happens when we put that in we get an error because 1.5 is greater than 1 remember our domain was negative 1 to 1 1.5 is not inside our domain so this value is not defined. Let's have you try one. Find the inverse sine of negative square root of 3 over 2. Pause the video and when you're ready, come back and check your answer. So we're looking at the right side of the unit circle, negative square root of 3 over 2. And we get that at 5 pi over 3. We can also use inverse trig to solve for angles and right triangles. So let's say we want to solve this angle theta. We know the opposite side and the adjacent side. So we're looking at the inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent equals that angle theta. So we're looking for the inverse tangent of 2 divided by 6 and that will give us 18.43.
So a theta equals 18.43. Let's say we have a ladder 10 feet long leaning against a building. In order to lean against a spot on the building 8 feet up, what must this angle theta be between the ladder and the building? So we can again use inverse trig. We have adjacent over hypotenuse, so that is inverse cosine of adjacent over hypotenuse equals my angle theta. So the inverse cosine of 8 divided by 10, and that is 36 point round up to 87. And these are in degrees. Let's have you try this one. Go ahead and use inverse trig to find theta. Pause, and when you're ready, come back and check. This time we have opposite over hypotenuse, so that's inverse sine of opposite over hypotenuse equals my angle theta. So the inverse sine of 6 divided by 7 gives, and that's going to round up to 59.00, so 59.00 degrees. If we have an inverse trig function inside of another trig function, we can evaluate these using triangles. So first of all, we know that the inverse cosine of 2 thirds equals some angle theta. So cos inverse cosine of 2 thirds equals some angle theta. And so that means if we have an angle theta, the adjacent side is 2 and the hypotenuse is 3. And we are looking for sine of this inverse cosine of 2 thirds, but that equals theta. So really we're looking for sine of theta, which is opposite over hypotenuse. So we need to figure out what this length is. Well, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. We know that 2 squared plus, we'll call this x, x squared equals 3 squared. So 4 plus x squared equals 9. x squared, we subtract 4 from both sides. So we get x squared equals 5. We take the square root to get x equals plus or minus square root of 5. But we can only have positive length, so x equals square root of 5. So now we know that sine of theta equals the opposite side, square root of 5, over the hypotenuse, 3. And that's our solution. What if we're asked to write cosine of inverse sine of x as an algebraic expression in x for negative 1 to 1? So let's see what this means. So if we have inverse sine of x, that means that inverse sine of x equals some angle theta. So that means that we're looking for cosine of that angle theta. So if we draw a triangle, and this is a right triangle, we have x, well we're used to seeing this as um, opposite over hypotenuse, but we can think of this as x over 1. So if this is theta, opposite size x, and there we have uh, our hypotenuse is 1. So cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so we need to find the adjacent side. So using uh, Pythagorean theorem, let's call this adjacent, this adjacent side is going to be y. So y squared plus x squared 
equals 1. So y squared equals 1 minus x squared. So y equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. We need positive length. So y equals square root of 1 minus x squared. So cosine is y over 1. So cosine of theta equals y is 1 minus x squared all over 1. So cosine of theta equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. And that's our solution. Now let's have you try two problems. First, write tangent of inverse sine of 3 sevenths. Go ahead and find that. And then write sine of inverse tangent of x as an algebraic expression in terms of x. Pause the video and come back when you're ready. So if we let inverse sine of 3 sevenths equal theta, that means that we're looking for a tangent of theta. So we draw a triangle. This is our angle theta. We know opposite over hypotenuse. We want adjacent because we need opposite over adjacent. Pythagorean theorem says that x squared plus 3 squared equals 7 squared. x squared plus 9 equals 49. x squared equals 40. x equals plus or minus square root of 40. We need positive. So, x equals square root of 40. Square root of 40, we can simplify. We can write this as square root of 4 times 10. So that's square root of 4 times square root of 10. So square root of 4 is 2 square root of 10. So opposite over adjacent is... 3 over 2 square root of 10. Next, write in sine of inverse tangent as an algebraic expression in terms of x. So we have tan inverse tangent of x equals some angle theta. So we're looking for sine of theta equals what? Tangent is opposite over adjacent. We can think of this as x over 1, so that when we draw our triangle, we have opposite over adjacent. Now we're looking for, we need opposite over hypotenuse. So we need our hypotenuse. We'll call our hypotenuse y. So 1 squared plus x squared equals y squared. 1 plus x squared equals y squared. So square root of 1 plus plus or minus square root of 1 plus x squared equals y. We need positive, so 1 plus x squared equals y. Square root of 1 plus x squared. So opposite is x over hypotenuse is square root of 1 plus x squared. And that is our answer.